the MNC standpoint, like uh, they're very much into DNY, like diversity and uh, inclusion, and um, they do a lot of CSR initiatives and all activities. And we have seen uh, while interviewing people, like uh, regardless uh, of, of their uh, competency uh, in that particular field, they are also interested um, to get into that uh, DNY drive, like drive diversity and inclusion drive for CSR activities. And these are these are definitely very nice uh, to have, or even like someone um, who wants to be a part of like an NGO type of things, or wants to get basically get involved into a social work type of things. Then you can definitely definitely highlight those, and you can obviously conclude that uh, in the interview, like, hey, I have seen your company been doing this, blah blah, and I, I'm interested, and I would love to take part into that field. And that is something really draws the attention. And we have recruited people. Um, uh, a few actually uh, in the team based on that. Um, of course, you need to prove yourself that uh, you are competent enough to deliver your job. And then these are, of course, like uh, nice to have skills or nice to have things uh, for the company. So that is that is very important. And in terms of like the research, uh, doing the research about the company or the roles, as said earlier, like you need to um, check their website, their LinkedIn where else they are active on, maybe on Facebook these days as well, um, and uh, basically uh, following them and what are the roles being posted online. Uh, sometimes I have seen like in India, some of uh, the recruiters, they will just call it and say, hey, come in, come in for a walk-in and this is, uh, and they wouldn't specify any type of role. So those are uh, kind of like a frustrating and those are very difficult, uh, uh, like, okay, which role you are going for? And I have heard that many times from uh, many of my friends, uh, my relatives as well. But uh, if you can uh, be a little um, more uh, or proactive, then you can definitely uh, do those searches or research about those companies, their roles, what roles being advertised as well. And then uh, prepare yourself like, okay, uh, these are the five or 10 jobs relevant to my background and um, just, just have a look and uh, see. A lot of the companies I have seen, like uh, they normally invite the freshers and um, they do not disclose any particular role. And they basically recruit based on the potential. Like I said, like what drives you? What are your main skill sets? Uh, what are the top thing, three things you would love to do um, uh, in your career? And based on that, if they have an opening, they basically deploy you on that particular role. So it's very important. These days, uh, are you quite familiar with Glassdoor? Have you heard of that? If no, that's fine, absolutely fine. There's no shame. Uh, students, please, please respond. Uh, whether you have heard that? Uh, no, I haven't heard no, of it. Um, yeah. uh, so uh, please, please, please note down. Um, and Glassdoor is something uh, where the companies, they basically, yeah, um, or the ex-employees, some of the current employees, they basically share their uh, feedback about the company. So that is very important. And it's kind of like uh, it would give you a sneak peek of uh, the company and uh, you will get an idea. Like, okay, this is how the company may look like. Also, Glassdoor is also a very um, handy tool to figure out that the role you have applied, how much can they pay? because Glassdoor is another kind of like a tool where people tend to use them to find out their market value, their salary. Like, for example, like if you are going for an interview um, uh, 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 in, a, in, a, in, a, in an organization where you see some like a marketing assistant type of role and you don't know how much can they pay. So if you take a look at Glassdoor, if they do have any record, you can check and you can say, okay, that, that person, or you, you will get an average salary quote over there. And you can, you can do uh, oh, oh, across, across the globe. Uh, Glassdoor is available, I think almost, almost all the countries um, uh, in the world. So please, please do check uh, later on, once you get a time. So that is also very important. So, um, once you review Glassdoor feedback and reviews, uh, you can obviously uh, get an idea about the company, their culture, uh, what they do, how they treat their employees, and um, of course, uh, 
uh, uh, some of the challenges as well. Uh, it's just not about like they will post like the positive feedback. You will also get to see the negative feedback as well. Uh, so that will also give you kind of like a, a critical thinking uh, 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 in your mind to analyze and see like, okay, uh, how, how, how am I going to address that if I am uh, going to interview that? And um, I have, I have, I have I've heard people uh, asking um, that because we remember we had a, a different incident uh, uh, in 2013, I think. Uh, and some of them, some, 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 some of the candidates, they basically asked us like, hey, we have actually come across this feedback on Glassdoor. How truth is that? And we obviously had to provide the justification, like, okay, why did that happen and everything? So it, it was all, all pretty, pretty fair. It was just kind of like a miscommunication or something, I would, I would say, uh, when one employee wanted to leave and uh, sudden things happened with the HR and all these things. So we basically were able to sort that out. So that sort of feedback and that sort of uh, thought process and thinking, that is, that is more than welcome. But you obviously need to ask in a different way. Like you, co you can obviously uh, cannot ask like, hey, I, I, I have seen that. I don't think this company is good and all these things, but you can see like, hey, um, I do see some good positive reviews. However, I have come across uh, this review. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, uh, can you please elaborate to give me more confidence if I have to join this company? And I'm pretty sure like uh, they will be more than happy to share, uh, uh, maybe not into detail, but can reassure you. On that, so that is that is a very 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 handy tool. And uh, another one, the last one is, why do you think that you were uh, the fit uh, for this role? Uh, that is also a very very good thing. You need to remind yourself that why you want to apply on this role. What I used to do um, while preparing myself, and what I have seen uh, uh, some of the outstanding candidates who have coming for an interview they've done is basically relating their skill set, what they want to do, and then basically with uh, the job description. So maybe 100%, it may not be a match, but at least even 70%, 50%, it matches what you want, what exactly you have done, you want to do, then highlight that, relate that. That means you have done your homework and you have read basically uh, what, is, what is expected out of you. Because I have seen this, people coming in saying, okay, so this is what it is. This is what you need to be doing. And in return, when you ask like, okay, so what exactly you want to do and why do you come here and become, become completely blank. So those are definitely something you need to keep in mind and uh, try, try to prepare yourself well uh, before the interview and basically try to showcase your strengths and highlighting that yes this is this is something you want to do you want to achieve and this is i can see that the job description is mentioned it is required and i can completely relate my experience or whatever my bookish knowledge is to the practical uh, 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 thing or uh, while basically uh, implementing those ideas so highlight highlight those uh, the next one i would say like successfully cracking interview um, So uh, the first thing you definitely have to do is soberly dressed, confident yet not arrogant, be humble, positive body language, or having the right attitude. Because a lot of them, no matter how good they perform in the interview, because of a lack of right attitude, or kind of like a f some of them, do, they do come across very arrogant. And because of that, trust me, I have seen like people, uh, can reject it uh, because of that because uh, sometimes like even though like my other peers they feel like okay uh, you know what uh, this is this is this 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 type of attitude may not be suitable for my team so that sort of thing you need to be really really mindful dress wise you know like it's pretty formal uh, it's not uh, always mandatory i would say like to wear like a suit or all these things but as long as um, it's properly um, steamed or ironed and uh, stuck in. Um, ideally a light color shirt because that's uh, hugely preferred in British culture or US culture or even like in Singapore and Hong Kong. Like I haven't seen anyone coming in for an interview um, with, with a different colored shirt. It's all like white. 
So, um, and it's, it's, I, th I think in, in India, I think it's, it's pretty much pretty much okay if you if you don't wear a white shirt. But as long as it's a formal, it's not that bright color. Uh, it's, it's it's fine. The second thing is being honest, uh, no need to fake. Um, we have seen, and we, we, we do receive a lot of fake resumes, particularly uh, 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 when we recruit in India. Um, and again, uh, you will be instantly caught. Uh, so please, please refrain uh, from faking all those stuff. Be honest, express your views, express your thoughts, express what you think, what you want to do, what you have done. Uh, but again, uh, no need to tell something which you haven't done or you do not have any experience at all. Then uh, the next one is showing passion, energy, and interest as a fresher, because this is uh, very vital, I would say. Um, you do not have that experience. You do not have that industry knowledge. What we always see is, is he or she someone we can train? Is he or she someone who has that passion? Is he or she really interested? And that energy level, like is he or she someone who has the drive, who has that hungerness inside and who can be trained? Then pretty sure like you will, you will definitely get the job. And as a fresher has said, nothing, not any sort of work experience and all these things, all those type of things are not expected out of you. So what we basically normally look at again is your positive frame of mind, right attitude, your um, eagerness to learn, being humble, and basically what you want to do and what you want to achieve in future. So someone with quite solution oriented as well as um, has the right objective in life or have that goal. Then attention to details. Um, as said, we have already touched upon that area, like going through what's being posted, job adverts and all those things, and then providing the detail uh, 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 analysis of uh, the understanding about the role and what is expected out of you, knowing uh, uh, your strengths and your limits and all those things, because also highlighting your limits um, doesn't define that you are a weak candidate. It's just like, okay, these are the strengths and weakness, or I would rather portray as a limit because these days in corporate, we really do not like someone talking about like weakness and all these things. Rather we ask or someone says, okay, this, these are my limit. Then yes, uh, we, 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 we literally encourage and we see like, okay, is he or she, she is someone can be trained and uh, can we basically push him or her uh, 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 quite a bit to get the best out of him or her. So those are the detail thing you, you, you need to be uh, quite mindful. Aligning your answers with examples, well articulated. A lot of things, again, as a fresher, whatever the industry or internship experience you will have, try to provide examples. It may not even related to the industry or internship experience. Could be uh, as a team management uh, doing something, maybe organizing a college fest or some other functions and all those things. So showcasing your talent or your experience, providing examples. Again, it may not be even college, maybe, maybe something you have done incredibly well in school. So highlight those. Those are always, always welcome. Then the next one is um, sharing a short-term goal, what you want to achieve or where do you see yourself in five years time. Um, that, is, that, is, that is very important. Uh, again, uh, what we have seen is uh, people who are often successful, they will always tell you like, hey, uh, this is what I want to do and this is where I do I want to see myself. It has to be realistic. It's not that in five years time, uh, you want to be the CEO of the company. Yes, you can be, but definitely you need to provide a realistic time frame. So um, share the realistic uh, goal and basically tell them like uh, what you want to do, what you want to achieve. And I, I normally say that, okay, let's, let's aim for the next five years. Okay, so if you join as an analyst, what are the next level? So you want to get, um, you basically want to get promoted to the next level or the next level or beyond that. So those are, those are more realistic. Anything beyond that, 
he can achieve, that's fantastic. There is, there is, there is no limit. The sky is the only limit. So that is, that is something uh, you can always highlight uh, in the interview. Then relating your answers with company best practices, core values, and how you fit in that culture. As said, uh, if you do a very good research about the company, then you will be able to provide all these. And again, these are something we have we have already discussed in the in the previous slides. Like uh, you can you can definitely get to see what the company is doing, and uh, what they literally believe. Uh, what are the core values that they do have in the company? And according to or accordingly, you can place your answers, and you can say like, look, your company core values are these four or five, and I do really believe in this. For example, like work ethic, I do have that. Punctuality, I have that. A few others like team teamwork i love that share example so those type of answers often welcome then sharing common vision you and company hiring manager again uh, according the same thing like when you think of where you want to achieve in five years and if you see that company has that right platform to provide you that share that experience like hey i have seen that because on linkedin these days a company they do post like who have been promoted um, so you can see like, hey, I have actually come across one of the adverts or one of the postings say, which says that um, that particular uh, uh, person got promoted in two years and, uh, and this is highly admirable and I am someone I would love to get that. So that obviously shares like your vision as well, how you are, um, uh, uh, how you are seeing yourself in the company, how you fit in in the company, where do you see, you see yourself in the next three to five years time and then sharing the vision like yes maybe company want to grow company would like to grow, and you would like to grow as well. then asking right questions uh, we'll discuss this in the next slide like what are the some of the outstanding questions or some of the really good questions we have heard about the years uh, sometimes like if you are asking the right question, that also shows the sincerity, that also shows um, the attention to detailing skill, that also shows how interested you are to work for the company or in that particular role, also shows who you are and how you're analyzing skills and how updated you are about the market, about the company, about what's happening in your surrounding. Then seeking feedback, the areas you can improve or um, work on. Always, always, I have seen that and I have done that uh, when I basically appeared for an interview and everything. Like, okay, before summing it up, I will ask, okay, um, is there an area I can improve? Can you please share my, like, what the feedback you think? And basically, ask them instantly. Uh, a lot of them, they'll be very upfront. They will tell you, look, mate, this is something you need to um, work on and this is something you have done really well but I believe like this is something you should have done it better. So, um, and again, there is, there is nothing wrong. And even after that, I have seen people getting job and I, I, I have recruited people like those who are more openness to learn, uh, no matter how good they have performed in the interview, but still that appetite to learn or to do better. So I always tell to my team members as well, like rather than competing someone with outside or your peers, always try to compete with yourself, try to be better the next day. So that is that is very important, and uh, you can you can you can adapt these type of things, and can literally um, build those competences. Then uh, this is a very very U.S. and U.K. Uh, corporate culture tie style. I have learned that when 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 um, uh, I studied there, sending a thank you note to the interviewer. So in an interview, I always suggest you to ask the interviewer's name and their email address. Once you come at home, then try to write a thank you note email. Maybe sometime summarizing that, hey, uh, but again, uh, it, it should not be that too long. Just a few sentences, four to five sentences. Summarizing like, hey, for example, like James, it was a pleasure meeting you today. Uh, I would love to uh, join your firm because these, these, these. And I believe, this is something you have already shared the feedback with me. I would love to work on. Then just a thank you note. Because yes. Then I tell you, if you do that, 
you can definitely stand out in the crowd because I know Indian market, even like uh, outside, there are so many people, right? Like in a like interview, if you, if you, if you just uh, go into Infosys or Accenture and those, I have seen like there are like 80, 100, 120 people coming in for interview uh, daily basis. And is it possible to remember all of them? Definitely not. But someone who have maybe performed well, have done that, I'm pretty sure they will definitely remember. So please, please do take that approach as a fresher, even when you have basically, um, uh, you will gain experience. So even like when you are an experienced person, I still do that if I go, go for an interview. So please, please uh, practice that habit. And I'm pretty sure you will, you will get to see that tradition uh, uh, later on. So the next one, as we discussed, as we said earlier, like some of the good questions we have had um, over the years. Again, uh, please don't ask those questions just for sake of it. The information are already available on the website. Try to be a little smarter. So one of the questions, uh, again, like all these questions are, 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 are really important. And if, if you can ask these or even like five or six, would really make you stand out, I can, I, can, I can promise. How do you describe your company culture? Because a lot of things we tend to avoid that because company culture is very important because that's where you, you will be um, working for nine, 10 hours. You will be spending uh, almost a half of the day. So it's very important to understand the company culture, uh, their, their best practices, and how do they treat their employees and all those things. Uh, so it's, it's always good. Like uh, if, if someone asks me, how is my 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 team culture or my company culture? I would say it's, it's definitely work hard, play hard. That sort of attitude we we, we follow. Uh, it's fun loving. Uh, we uh, go officially or like sometimes like we we, we obviously uh, encourage the top performers. We do uh, like uh, weekly roundup meetings, sharing the best ideas. Uh, and sharing uh, some of the principles. And uh, we basically encourage people to speak um, in my team meeting as well, because I, I normally do host the meeting and then I basically let it um, uh, uh, controlled by uh, 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 my other, other, other members. And they basically then take it over and then say like, okay, uh, this is something uh, I have done in this way. This, is, this went well. And we basically celebrate even the small successes. As you know, uh, foreign culture and outside, we, we do go out for drinks. Uh, some of them like, uh, again, uh, if there is a top performer in the team and we normally take them um, for a lunch, maybe for a dinner or sometimes for drinks as well. So that sort of, that sort of culture. And if you come in Hong Kong or in Singapore, that's a pretty common thing, even like in the UK or in the US. So people, people tend to like that and people love that because I have also come across people in Singapore in my team he or she will be like, okay, I'm not that outgoing person. I would love to come and work maybe at 8.30 and we'll leave office by 6.37. That's absolutely fine. So you will get an idea about like how the person is or uh, if he or she thinks like this is may not be the team um, where I can fit in, he or she will tell. Rather than hiring someone and then firing in three months or letting someone go in three months is, is a pure mess. So this is very important for you to understand and to see whether you fit in that culture or not. How relevant is that? It's basically trying to connect those dots there rather than doing it and parting it ways uh, at the end or later. Then how do you describe your team? As I said, uh, already, we have already covered that uh, area. What are the best practices, core values in the company? The same thing. What makes one successful in this company? That is very important as well. Um, again, the reason why you should be asking this, that will all, what are the performance indicators like KPIs or SLAs, like service level agreement. All of you, when you will get into corporate, you will have a certain task you need to follow or you need to complete, you need to do. So you need to ask like, okay, how your performance will be measured. And that is also very important because end of the day, if you want to sustain in the company, if you want to work in the company, your performance has to be up to the mark. Otherwise, no one will keep you because this is corporate, this is not government. So you definitely need to ask that question. And if someone asks me, I will definitely tell your integrity and ethics, your service mentality, 
teamwork, punctuality. These are the four or five top things I would, I would always tell. This is, all, again, I said, it's a very good question to ask. Then you will get to know, like, okay, you will also get an idea about, like, how that company um, work style is. Like, are they uh, quite punchy or they are quite, like, laid back? Like, when, when, when I went to Australia to one of our office summit, I've seen, like, Australian people, they obviously do work hard. However, they are pretty laid back as compared to Hong Kong and Singapore, where in Hong Kong and Singapore, you will get to say, oh my God, it's like so fast paced. So you will get that sort of idea, like, okay, is it a very fast paced environment or it's pretty laid back? So that sort of thing, you will get an idea. What are the main KPIs and SLAs that already I mentioned? Like, okay, these are the things you need to be achieving. For example, if you're to get into marketing, some may, someone may tell you like, okay, your target for uh, a quarter or, uh, um, six months or a year would be this. So this is something you need to achieve. So that should be your KPIs and how you will be uh, meeting those, you will depend on that. You will be told once you get in. So those type of thing. Then how do you describe the growth of the company in the past three years and how does it look like in the next three to five years? Then you can obviously see whether it's an organic growth or not. Uh, again, as a founder, sometimes it's very difficult for you to predict but uh, when you get experience, then it will make sense, a lot of sense for you, to be honest, because I have seen people scrambling literally when they had, for example, like 50 people, and then literally they had 250 people. And in two, three years time, they were downsized again to 40 people. So that's, that's not a good sign. Someone who have grown significantly over the years, or I would rather say as organic growth, like this year 50, next year 80, then 100, then 120, then 150, growing organically rather than just catching the trend and then basically uh, hiring all those people. So you will get an idea about those. So you can definitely ask those and analyze like, okay, uh, how does it sound uh, to you? What's the vision uh, for the company and team? Uh, a lot of people, uh, uh, they have asked uh, this question to me. And again, uh, I had to basically share uh, my team's vision, uh, company's vision as well, because um, when I started my role uh, with uh, my previous firm, then again, I had to uh, set everything from scratch. And then I had to literally tell like, look, this is, this is the plan and this is how I want to develop my team. This is how I want to build the desk, build the team. And this is where, what we are looking in two years time or three years time. And this, these many clients who should be targeting, that is the amount of revenue we should be doing. So all these type of things you can, you can definitely ask. And then you can see, again, you can analyze whether it is quite punchy for you or it, is, it sounds quite reasonable or it is way too aggressive. If you think that is something uh, not good for you or you think it is very, very difficult to achieve, then again, uh, you, you can take the call, whether this is the right time for you to join the company or, it is the right place to join the company. Um, sorry, it, 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 is it the right place for you to join or not? You can take the call. How does the career path look like? Uh, again, once you get in as a fresher, it's kind of like a template that you should follow. Like, okay, you were joining in, in, a, in a level one role or an associate role or an analyst role. Then the next level will be associate. Then next level would be senior associate. Then so on. If the company has a very clear career path plan, then you see like, yes, uh, there, is, there is no bureaucracy or something. Uh, but I have seen some of the domestic companies in India, they may not have that clear plan. It's, it's a lot of the time, it's kind of like, uh, uh, you, you, you may not get promoted even uh, if, you, if you work really hard or if you like uh, provided very good revenue or result to them. So that sort of thing, like if they do not have a clear strategy or clear career path, then uh, again, like I would, I would always stay away uh, from those because what happens is once you get in, then you will get to see those, all those internal politics, favoritism and all those things. Like, okay, if you are very close to your boss, then only you will get promoted. And these are definitely, I have, I have, I have seen that. I have uh, heard that some of my friends telling me 
working working uh, in a smaller firm. So uh, that is something you can keep an eye. Are there any skill advancement training program? Um, these days, um, again, this is quite crucial. And particularly in post-pandemic, post-COVID, uh, uh, this will become more and more important. And a lot of the companies, they do provide their internal employees with more training to upskill them and uh, to basically provide or facilitate them to become much more advanced. Uh, uh, so this is something uh, you, should, you should always ask. And you can always highlight if, if you have any particular interest, uh, for example, if you want, you want to learn something, for example, like the marketing guys, like you want to learn like Adobe Analytics or like uh, the Google uh, uh, Analytics, those type of things, then you can always highlight and they can tell, oh, okay, we, we may not use Google or something, we may use something from a different uh, company. So those type of things. How does their DNI platform look like? As said, uh, with all the MNCs right now, uh, they are literally driving down quite hard because you know, women empowerment is uh, kind of like uh, going to be a driving factor for the companies. And uh, I literally drive that platform for Singapore and Hong Kong for Standard Chartered Bank, and uh, and they have literally mentioned like any female good candidate, we should be interviewing. So that is that is. What's, what's happening uh, uh, and I'm pretty sure like in India as well like in my first company they used to do quite a lot uh, driving all those um, diversity inclusion platform plus they also used to recruit um, physically uh, challenged people uh, and they provided that platform uh, uh, for them to become successful and believe me I've seen some outstanding talent so that sort of thing you will get an idea about the company like how they treat employees, how they treat others, how their internal culture look like and everything. And I'm pretty sure once you get all these things, you will have a positive feeling about or even before joining the company. Are they involved with any CSR activities? As said, all these areas, uh, these are very, very important these days. And if you see that your company is doing, then please uh, uh, feel free, feel free to join them because those who are open to engage with others without any profit related interested or any interest profit related um, uh, lack of profit related interest then they tend to take care of their employees more and better now once you get in so we have discussed all this like the interview process what you should be doing what you should refrain off and uh, what the questions you can ask once you get in one of the things you need to remind yourself is why are you here? What you want to achieve? These are very, very important because again, if you do not have that interest, that lack of vision, then it is, it is very difficult for you to sustain in the job. I've seen that. I said, Definitely, we have touched upon all these areas um, slightly a bit in the previous slides. But again, as I said, like competition is inevitable, like in everywhere. So if you want to sustain, then you have to perform well. And if you do not, then a company will forget you. So please, please, please remind yourself your dreams, your goal, why you are here, what drives you, all these things. Patience, patience would be the key because things may not pan out the way you thought or you wanted. And uh, I have seen that uh, uh, people uh, who came in thought, oh, it would be kind of like a cakewalk uh, uh, for him, uh, but things, things become completely different. So patience during then would be very, very key. And r regardless, like, uh, being it in corporate or in um, student life, everywhere, you have to have to show uh, the patience. You definitely need to work on that ability or that skill, to be honest, as a soft skill development thing. Mindful of four A's, and I, I always tell these four things um, to everyone, like being active, adapt, adjust, and advance. If you remember or if you are mindful of these four A's, trust me you will be self-motivated you will be able to motivate yourself 
active in the sense, keeping your eyes open, what's happening in your surroundings. If you think you are lacking in that particular area, what is the next thing you should do? Adapt. Being flexible. Adapt that. Then adjust. Once you adjust, then try to advance. If you follow this principle, you will be able to come out of any difficult situation, trust me. And I have very, very, very solid examples for that with my team members. And uh, again, they were, they were well able to come out of that situation and they became top performer uh, uh, for my team. Initial days, I said, things didn't pan out the way they wanted. Then they realized this is something non-negotiable. He or she needs to do it. Adapted with that, adjust, adjusted. And then he or she basically learned how to advance on that. And basically now is having that ice walk or cake walk, you can say. Then first in adopting your domain, working style, company culture. Once you get in the company, then the first thing you should be prioritizing is adapting your domain. As I said, if you're into HR, if you're into finance, if you're into marketing, if you're into IT, adapt your domain. Working style of the team, of the company, then company culture. First, what happens to all the freshers is basically we always, always try to create a mark or basically to create a mark as quickly as we can. By doing that, we do mistake. Again, how you can... Okay, Shobha Sachi, excuse me. Sachi, if you have a session, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, sir. Sure. Okay, this session is going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question and answer session. I'm going to ask you a question. Sure, sure, sure. Sure. 